Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and this is part two of my gut snare drum video series. It's going to be a short series. This will be the only other part. And I know I told you in my earlier video that I'd show you this drum. So I have this here with me today, and I've been recording these Nard videos on there. And this is a 1920s, I don't know the exact date, uh, it's a nickel over brass drum, very, very heavy. And you see the gut snares, real gut, cheap gut, okay? So today we're going to talk about this drum a little and also compare it with a modern orchestra snare drum. Now, this is the gut that I showed you the other day, and it was on this Ludwig strainer, P83, the bottom half. So on this drum, we have a WFL strainer, just like that, P83. So I believe, and I'm almost positive, this was switched out at one point. I believe this drum was a Super Ludwig. So I'll show you some close-ups. I'll take some pictures after I'm done filming this. And the uh, person that owned it, probably many people owned it over the years, uh, probably modded it out uh, with this strainer. At one point, this might have had that kind of super sensitive strainer that the um, Super Ludwigs had. And I believe this drum, after looking at it even closer, uh, might have been re chromed at some point. So, uh, but originally these were nickel. Okay, this is another muffler I use sometimes. So I'll try to show you this drum close here. He also modded it with a Gretsch drum key mount, which is handy, all right, and took out the muffler, and I filled that in as well. But it's got these two lugs, and those are original. And the straight rims with the rim clips, which are prone to break. Probably these have been replaced, because all the old ones were really soft, and they'd break. So this uh, has top and bottom Renaissance diplomat heads on there. And back then, a lot of these guys, they would take their drums and modify them. Uh, I know that because I, when I was a kid, I talked to some old-timers. And some of my teachers at Manhattan School of Music, Fred Hanger, Walter Rosenberger, we would talk about snare drums, how people would modify them and do their own thing with them, kind of like a car. And, uh, yeah, that probably took away some of its value, but I don't think they cared. They just wanted them to sound great. So you see on the back end of this, let's find the back end, there it is, how I have the gut in there. And this is a Ludwig butt plate and probably not an original, although there aren't extra holes. So when I told you the other day, you know, we pulled it real tight. We used some spray polyurethane. That's what I did on these snares. And so far, so good because I have not had any issues with them. It's pretty humid in North Carolina. We're in August. So I've not had any issues with them stretching or pulling. The drum's been real consistent. Now, one thing I wanted to show you today is a comparison uh, between this and a modern orchestral snare. I don't have any metal drums here um, up in this studio. It's in my other studio up in the mountains. But um, I do have a really heavy uh, pearl snare drum and that is here it weighs a ton this is uh, I believe it's a 20 ply it's massive snare drum great drum it's a five and a half by 14 and you see the snares on there it's a combination this is what comes stock with it it's a combination of cable wire and curly snares uh, this is another good drum for rudimental Music. I don't know if they make these anymore, but I've had it quite a while.
very sensitive, very live. So I have used this drum for playing rudimental music and recording solos and whatnot. Same exact head though, Renaissance, okay? So now we'll play the other drum. It's about the same weight, believe it or not. This is a two-piece brass shell. Okay. So right away you see, or I hear, I don't know what you see or hear, but uh, I hear the dryness of it and the impact of it. And that is due mostly to these gut snares. And I know it's not really a fair comparison because that's a wood drum, this is a metal drum. But they're very, very similar, uh, the way they feel. But this one, just it's like a gunshot, really. So these gut snares, they just make the drum sound really thick and dry. So I totally recommend checking these out if you've not done it before. And once winter comes, I'm going to put some calf heads on this drum and play it with gut snares. So I'll probably make a video of that. But I just wanted to show you as a follow-up to that other video that I did the other day showing you how to put these on an acrylite or a superphonic, uh, that it does change the sound of the drums. The snares do uh, pretty radically, actually. So that's something maybe you want to try. And remember, all you have to do is get your hands on one of these P83s, the bottom, and if you have an Acrylite, an old one from the 60s, that'll use that strainer and um, an old Superphonic. If not, you can get one and put it on there. The good news is those drums aren't that expensive, and they made so many of them. I mean, they're all over the place, okay? So you could probably grab one for a couple hundred bucks, maybe a, maybe a bit more, doesn't have to be a chrome over brass or anything, because those are expensive. But if you get one that was made in the 70s, olive badge even, and then put this strainer on there, put gut on there, you'll really enjoy playing the rudimental stuff that I've been doing from the Nard book, Wilcox and Pratt. All that stuff on there, it really makes a difference in the sound of the drum. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you soon.